Hello Hunters, and welcome to my new Monster Hunter World series I am naming Art of the Setup, a series in which I discuss and explain high level speedrunning exploits in Monster Hunter World. Today's topic is one about a recent exploit I discovered that has revolutionized the theoretical best way for many weapons to speedrun Optional Lunastra, Arc Tempered Lunastra, and Arc Tempered Tailstra. The strategy I am referring to is known as the Ground Dunk Lock and it is one of the coolest speedrunning exploits that we have ever discovered in Monster Hunter World. Before you begin watching this video, I recommend you watch Fometo's Tailstra and Lunastra guides, which I have linked in the description and in the video in front of you. They should cover all the basics you will need in order to fully digest this video's contents. I also recommend players who might be attempting this to use an overlay to aid in the sciencing of these runs. I will link that in the description as well. This exploit requires incredible precision, so the overlay is a great tool that will help you script your run. So with all this said, let's get into the meat of the video. So what is this crazy sounding ground dunk exploit even about? The idea is simple. When either Tailstra or Lunastra attempt to fly away from an area, you time a stagger which causes them to dunk. Simple right? Well, not exactly. Although the lock itself looks simple, Forming the conditions to get it going are actually quite complex. The best way to understand why we do the steps we do is to work the problem backwards. I will be using optional Lunastra as my main example for this video, but any of the listed concepts apply to both Arc Temper Lunastra and Arc Temper Teostra. This trick has actually been proven to work on Kushala by the player Kumo Kumo, but it is not useful at all since keeping Kushala permanently locked is already a non-issue for most weapons. So the first question one must ask is, how is Lunastra getting dunked while she's obviously still on the ground? The ground dunk lock abuses a very specific transition animation that both Teostra and Lunastra use when fleeing an area. In this special animation, it looks like they're getting on their toes while opening up their wings high up before getting airborne and flying away. Only during this special animation will staggering them dunk them. Note that tail flinches do not dunk, but wing and head flinches do. There are two conditions one must meet in order to begin doing this trick. The first being Lunastra wanting to exit the area. The second condition is she needs to be within a specific spot within the battle area. In this image, I have marked in green the areas where Lunastra will do the special animation if she's attempting to flee. So in order to begin doing our ground dunk exploit, we must A. Have Luna attempting to flee the area, and B. Have Luna in a specific spot within said area. Now that we understand the conditions that must be met in order to start the lock, let's tackle the first condition of forcing Lunastra to attempt fleeing the area. Due to dunk pods not working on elders, we are stuck with only two other known ways of achieving this forced transition. The first way is to use a monster's normal transition timers in order to get this transition. Luna for example, will leave her spawn area about 90 seconds after engagement, just simply due to pre-coded AI behavior within the quest. This method, however, isn't useful to us because this means that for 90 seconds, you must fight Luna normally and hope to have her in the correct spot with the correct amount of damage to start the dunk lock. Although theoretically this might be the optimal way of doing it for some weapons, due to not losing any time setting up, it introduces a huge layer of RNG that would make even the most ambitious of players cringe. There is another way however, and that is to force the transition by using a transition area. Transition areas are areas that connect the main battle areas. Although monsters can be pulled into or near these areas, they will always attempt to flee after they take a set amount of damage, assuming your hunter is standing inside one of these areas. Once a monster decides to leave, it will enter a state in which it will keep attempting to transition until it makes it to the area it is set to go to. This behavior to disengage and continue being disengaged, despite repeated staggers, is the core foundation of the ground dunk lock and many other of the exploits I abuse. A good visual one can use in order to tell when a monster is going into the state is they will do a quick roar while the map border will turn white. The nearest transition area is located in the tunnel leading up to the ledge between the Teo and the Luna spawns. I have marked this transition area in this image with the color blue. Okay, so step one is to pull Lunastra by the transition area and do an X amount of damage to her while standing in this transition area to force her to transition. To get to this required damage cleanly and consistently, I use dunk setups which allow me to dish out the necessary damage in a controlled fashion. If the necessary damage threshold is met, Lunastra will attempt fleeing the area she is currently in. I will not cover how to do these dunk setups in this video, but in front of you are three videos you can use as examples to help guide you. The next step after she enters this forced transition phase is to get her to the ground dunk area I mentioned from before. Luckily for us, monsters that fly away from areas will always loop back towards the center point. 
This means that all we have to do is to dunk her as she attempts looping back out from the center of the fighting area. Light Bowgun and Heavy Bowgun can use stickies for this dunk because of the natural delayed nature of the damage. But the melee weapon setup is a bit more complicated. Lucky for y'all, I figured out a universal method of getting this dunk by using crystal bursts that are conveniently placed on the way to Lunastra spawn. To acquire these crystal bursts, one needs to bomb the ground in the correct spot in order to expose the slinger ammo. The crystal burst is necessary not just for dunking Lunastra, but for helping us get to the correct damage in order to dunk her. During the initial setup by the transition zone, one must do an exact amount of damage in order to have a single crystal burst dunk her as she attempts looping back around the center of the fighting area. Optional Lunastra's head threshold is 400 HP, which means that when you shoot her with a crystal burst, one must have done between 391 and 399 damage in order to dunk her, since each crystal burst does 9 damage to the face. To get to this threshold, my setup uses 2 mega barrel bombs, a small bomb, and 1 crystal burst to the face, which adds up to 393, just enough damage to dunk her with 1 more crystal burst. It is technically also possible to ride her with a mount to the middle area, but because her flight pattern from this mount is so RNG, I would not recommend doing it like this since you have no consistency, and in my opinion, consistency is vital when attempting to optimize these locks. A possible future alternative to this setup might be available to us in Iceborne, where we could potentially ride and dunk Lunastra in the middle by using the newly introduced Clutch Claw. Okay, so she flies towards the middle and we dunk her as she attempts looping around with either a sticky or by using a sniped crystal bird shot. So what next? Now here's where the fun begins. If you dunked her within the correct area, every stagger thereafter will cause her to dunk. One thing to note is that if she did not enrage earlier, she will enrage in the fighting area before proceeding to continue leaving. It is fine she does this, but one must know this enrage roar is coming in order to prepare to dodge it before continuing with the lock. Because this is a perfect lock, I advise you to incorporate proccing feline heroics during the earlier setup by using a combination of environmental heat, Lunastra's aura, and bombs to get you within the appropriate health threshold. Having all these variables fit together takes a lot of trial by error, so be aware that developing these kind of runs takes many hours of experimentation. The damaging aura she emits from her body disappears shortly after the first few dunks, so try to be careful not to get melted by it if you happen to proc heroics before it goes away. One is able to proc evasion mantle off these dunks, so I advise you to attempt to incorporate it to make use of all the DPS tools you have available in order to get the most from this lock. Each dunk pushes Luna further and further back, so be aware that you might find yourself in odd positions due to the weird terrain in which you're working in. A final note on this trick is that it's actually not a true infinite, because like all transition locks, it actually stops working the moment the monster attempts to limp away, somewhere around under 20% HP. This is a huge problem for these locks, but it's something you'll have to figure it out and overcome on your own. I usually deal with this issue by praying I deal enough DPS to kill the monster within the next dunk before it attempts limping away. This concludes everything I wanted to share regarding the ground dunk lock on Lunastra. The Tailstra setup is similar to Lunastra's conceptually, in which we drag Tailstra to a transition area and proceed to do our setup. Currently we only have developed a light bowgun setup for achieving this trick thanks in part to Kumo Kumo's research, but a melee setup is still very much up in the air. Unlike Lunastra, Tailstra can be dunked using a flash, so maybe we can bypass the crystal burst and use the flash instead. This however seems to make him go crazy, so I currently have not figured out a way to bypass this issue. With only players like me and Kumo Kumo pushing forward in these complicated setups, progress has been painstakingly slow. I hope in Iceborne, we get more players interested in doing this kind of research. If you're interested in learning more about Monster Hunter World exploits, I'll be making more of these type of videos. If that isn't enough, I would urge you to join our speedrunning discord, where you can speak directly to me and other community members about these exploits. With Iceborne looming just around the corner, we can now begin to look back and appreciate how far we've taken speedrunning in Monster Hunter World. Exploits like the ground dunk may also potentially play bigger roles in Iceborne, allowing us to lock not just master ranked versions of Tailstra and Lunastra, but monsters like Vulcana as well. Monster Hunter World is full of these neat exploits, and I look forward to sharing them with y'all leading up to Iceborne. Thanks for watching.